I'm going to show you three ways to get control over your mind. I learned these techniques from ancient occult text. So stick around if you wanna learn how to control your thoughts and focus with a little more ease. This is especially important if you are a healer or a light worker like myself, because you're always working with other people and you really want to be able to control your thoughts and your negative emotions and things so that you have a little bit better vibration working with others. And also you want to be able to not just control your mind for your mood, but control your mind so that then you can help others more effectively. And you'll have the tools to be able to help others more effectively as well when you learn these techniques and these exercises that I teach. Because really, when you are a light worker, when you're a healer, you are out there helping others with the same problems that you've helped yourself with a lot of times. You know, you go through a lot of challenges, a lot of trials as a light worker, as a healer, anybody that helps other people. Um, so when you were helping yourself, right, through things like um, dealing with grief, dealing with loss and stuff, I mean, could you imagine going to, uh, a marriage counselor that's never been married, um, a massage therapist that's never been massaged, a tarot reader that's never had a tarot reading, or an addictions counselor that's never had any type of you know addiction or dealt with it in their life, right? So you want people with experience, and that's what you are when you're a healer or a light worker. You have a lot of experience dealing with things, overcoming things, going through development. So I learned some of these techniques throughout my own experiences, obviously, throughout my, my own problems and trials and challenges. So I've gone through quite a few of severe depressions in my life, right? As many people have. In fact, in, it was around 2005-ish, my first one, and that's when I started listening to some really cool teachers on mindfulness training and, and some different techniques and things. But then later, um, I got into some more occult, old, ancient work. Um, and that was like in 2000, uh, 2011, I remember I came across the really awesome occult text that changed my life. So these practices that I do have changed my life, have made me um, awaken and evolve in a way that now I can handle things so much better than I used to. And I don't go into these severe depressions anymore. Um, I, don't, I don't have the anxiety I used to have as long as I do these techniques that I'm gonna share with you about controlling the mind and getting control over the mental body and the emotional body. So mindfulness is the first practice, right? That's the first technique. This is the first thing I learned back in like 2005, right? And mindfulness is really not just about being mindful. It's a little bit deeper than that. It's about pulling your five energy bodies together into a focus so that you are then present and aware. And the way that you can get through this type of work, this mindfulness training, one of the big ways that I started using back, God, I must have started this in 2003 now that I think about it. But 2003, I started doing what was called sensation training. And sensation training helps you to get in touch with your senses. So for instance, I remember I was sitting in a car waiting for someone while they were doing a job interview, right? And I started doing these practices. I had been reading this book and this book like was amazing, right? It helped me with all these meditation techniques that were really spiritual and getting you into um, a deeper way, more intuitive and everything, right? So anyways, I was sitting there and I started like breathing in the air, but feeling it. So you don't wanna just breathe in the air and breathe, just think about air. You wanna breathe it in and feel the thickness of the air, right? That's interesting. When you start feeling the air and realizing that when you're running your hair, your hand through the air, it's not just, it's not like a, it's not air, there's not a vacuum, there's not, it's not that there's nothing there, there's something there, you can feel the air, it becomes thick, right? And when you breathe, you can feel the thickness coming in through the nostrils. And then when you start listening, right, this is called sensation training. You use your senses and you really get in tune with each sense. So when you start listening, you start listening. I was listening in the car. I remember my friend was in the interview and I was listening and I would try to listen as far out as I could. 
way more than just like the streets around me. I would try to hear for miles and I would try to hear past all of the noise, right? So again, sensation training, think about, you know, smell and the thickness of the, not just the smells that you're smelling, but the thickness of the air coming in and then get in control of, of the, of the listening far away, the awareness of that sense and get in, in control of the eyes. So looking as far away as you can at very, something very small or even looking at something like your hand and looking at the lines and then memorizing, like looking at it and taking a picture and just trying to memorize and then close your eyes and imagine those lines, right? So use your different senses and as you do this sensation training, which I teach this way more extensively within, you know, my, um, my courses and stuff, but for now, I just want to tell you, it's called sensation training. Um, you just tap into each sense and you really get into using those senses and really get in tune with them. And as you get in tune with those senses, those five senses, the sixth sense automatically becomes more enhanced. It's like, it's just easy after that. After you get in touch with all of those five senses and you really, really start working with them, it just naturally becomes a progression to become more intuitive, more creative, and more tapped into your sixth sense. It's pretty amazing. And the negativity stops, right? The negative thoughts. So if I'm driving down the road, and I'm, you know, I get a thought in my head that I'm like, whoa, what is that, right? That's, that's like more of a negative thought or something. I'm like, whoa, I, I just pay attention. I go, okay, I don't need that thought. I need to become present and I need to become aware and just pay attention to my senses and what I'm feeling and come back into your body, you know? Um, so that is the first practice. It's called sensation training, and it has to do with mindfulness and becoming present and aware. So the first lesson that a high magic practitioner must learn and a martial artist must learn is control of the mind. And this is control of the mental body. And if you're into the tree of life or the Kabbalah or anything, then you'll know a little bit about what I'm talking about here. Number eight, it is Hod. It's the mental body, it's control of the mind, it's mercury, right? And so with this, um, I learned this exercise in 2011, and it's called, I call it, commanding the roles, okay? So commanding the roles is where you're commanding whatever role you're in as the only role you are allowed to be in. So for instance, it sounds easy until you start doing it. It's the hardest exercise I have ever done in my life and I'm a black belt in martial arts, right? Okay, so this is amazing when you try this. The first thing you're gonna do, I want you to try this practice for three days, okay? You're going to, let's say, drive your car. And when you drive your car, you are the driver. And that is all you're allowed to be. You're allowed to be the driver. And so every time your mind starts thinking about something else besides driving or being the driver in the present moment, you have to start over. You have to realize, oh my God, I was out of my mind. I was un operating unconsciously. I was not in conscious control. And so you have to keep pulling yourself back in and saying, I was not in conscious control right there. Okay, I am the driver. And then when you are, let's say you're brushing your teeth, I am the person that is brushing their teeth right now. I am, when I am working, I am this role of working. Like I'm a teacher, so I am the teacher. I'm not allowed to think about my personal life. I'm not allowed to think about other issues. I am only allowed to think about teaching. Or, you know, when you are entertaining a friend, I am the friend right now. And so I have to be present with my friend as the friend and not thinking about my life other than what we are, we are actually talking about. So it, it gets really interesting when you start doing this exercise. Do it, try it for three days. And, and that's the thing is a lot of people, and this is where I got frustrated with my practice, is I started doing this and I was like, <laughs> because I'm a black belt, a martial artist, I'm very determined to win a challenge, right? And so I was looking at this as a challenge and I was like, I am going to do this. I am going to get this. I am going to like master this. And I didn't. And that's the trick. When you're doing these practices, you know, don't be too hard on yourself because 
it's not really possible to get to that point. I mean, maybe for 1% of people, possibly. But it's not naturally going to be a thing where you're going to be just completely that role forever. You know what I mean? For that time that you are that role. It's just an exercise that helps you realize how unconscious you actually are. Practice number three, finally. This is one of my favorites. Okay, this is called stepping back into the seat of the soul. And you might know this one already, possibly, as being the observer. So with this one, you are going to step back into the seat of the soul, right, on the other side. And the way you do this is that when you have a thought, a negative thought, or something that you're just like, whoa, <laughs> that was a pretty intense thought, I want you to step back from that thought, and I want you to say, that's an interesting thought. And then I want you to just observe all thoughts as that happens and just watch the thoughts instead of thinking of being the thinker and identifying with the thoughts allow the mind to have its thoughts or allow the thoughts to come in as a channel but just observe those thoughts step back into the seat of the soul and observe from behind from behind yourself from behind the thinker from behind the mental body Step back and just observe and say, huh, well, that was a thought, but I am not the thoughts. That's the big key. You are not your thoughts. Your thoughts are part of a stream of consciousness that comes in. It's part of universal consciousness. It's part of energy. It's part of mental programming, right? But you are not those thoughts. Those are just thoughts. So this one is a key. This is something that I practice daily. This has become just a part of my life. And it has changed my life tremendously because I know that really I am operating through sacred contracts. So I have these contracts with life and with people that I have agreed upon in my lifetime. And I'm actually, my energy, my soul is my holy guardian angel, right? That's what a lot of people don't realize. The holy guardian angel is your soul. It's the soul on the other side that's projecting energies out into these bodies of consciousness so that they can experience and live life like, it's like a play that plays out these sacred contracts. Right? This gets pretty deep. So when you become the observer, though, you'll start noticing these contracts. You'll, you'll notice, huh, you know, I said that to this person, and I thought this thing. And it helped them tremendously, or the other way around, right? All of a sudden, I attracted this person to my life, and they said this amazing thing that changed my life, and then I never saw them again, right? These are sacred contracts. Whether this is somebody long-term in your life, whether this is somebody that comes in for a minute, you are really going to see these sacred contracts when you step back into that seat of the soul, into the other side to where you're the observer, and just kind of watching and observing yourself and how you're acting and how you're reacting to other people. Because, you know, if you're reacting to somebody and you notice that you're getting angry and, and then you are able to step back and just see yourself, you know, it really changes a lot of things about your life. You just kind of say, wow, you know, hey, I'm reacting, but I'm not going to stop myself necessarily, <laughs> necessarily. Um, but I'm just going to watch what I'm doing and why I'm doing it to see and understand a little bit more about what I'm learning and why I'm doing the things that I'm doing and why they are doing the things that they're doing. So you become almost like your own psychologist at that point. But anyways, it really does help you to understand what you're doing, why you're doing it, and to see a little bit more clearly about what's going on in your life and the play that you're playing out so that you can get more control over your mind, over your mental programming, over your mental body, and then just see yourself more clearly and see just everything around you. Join me for a transformational spiritual awakening event on September 1st, 2019. This is secret still, but you can go ahead and register on brandyjoy.com. If you like this video, as always, click the like button below for me. Share it with your friends that might need it. 
And if you click the bell below, you'll get notified when I have new videos up. Thank you so much for watching, and please leave a comment below to let me know what other videos I can make for you, because I love talking metaphysics. So thanks so much for joining me. You have a wonderful rest of your week, and I will see you next week. Bye for now.